Okay, so here is another issue I ran into and a, and a way to fix the problem. This time it revolves around Oracle's VirtualBox. And so when I opened up the program, which is right here, the program, VirtualBox Manager. So when I opened this up, I had the pop-up telling me that, you know, there's an updated version of the software. And so when that happens, when you update your VirtualBox software, you also have to update your um, your extension pack. Um, also, uh, by the way, I should probably mention that th none of this is scripted. It's off the t you know off the top of my head, so I apologize for things like um and you know like long pauses. I'm just speaking off the cuff, you know. Uh, put it that way. All right, so. I guess I should start out by saying if, you, if you're new to Oracle Box, or VirtualBox rather, when you install the software, you also need to install a, an extension pack. And how you do that is you click on the tools at the top because you probably won't have any operating systems ready, at least as of yet, okay? And I might actually go over how to install an operating system on VirtualBox another time. And we'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so... On tools. Oh, and by the way, this is how you. This right here is how you would add your or create new operating systems through the tools. You start here and go through the process. But again, I might just do a video of that on another time. All right. So under tools, hit preferences. Down here at extensions, you'll click add to add the extensions. However, there's another way to do that as well. Okay. When you download the software for the virtual box which is right here on that web page you will also see a link for the extension pack and the numbers should match up as you see here it's version 6.1.16 over here 6.1.16 all right so if you double click on this extension pack it will open up this here and allow you to install it and that's one way to do that, at least to get it installed on the VirtualBox Manager, the VirtualBox software. But that's only step one of getting the extension, the extension pack installed. You also have to install it on your Windows operating system or your Linux operating system, whichever. They're slightly different between the two Linux and, and Windows, but essentially you still need to install the extension pack. All right, so... Here we are. I'm running Windows 10 in the background. As you can see there, that's the preview of the Windows. If I, you know, go over here and click Start, you'll see that the Start button popped up over there. Okay. Um, you can actually see that I'm moving the mouse around, I believe. Maybe you can't. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, but, yeah. You know, that is interesting. How come it shows that? Oh, right, through the preview only. Ugh. I'm sorry, I just kind of was thinking something to myself out loud, and I didn't mean to kind of go off, off topic. Essentially, what I was thinking to myself is, I did realize that on, with the OBS software, you can only... This is my... Like, oh, you see, that's like my one, my main desktop, Okay. Right, so here's my main desktop here, as you just saw. I have two monitors, and the virtual box is running on the secondary monitor. However, I did notice that I can't just drag this over to the secondary monitor and then start picking up the secondary monitor. It doesn't work like that because I'm using two different I'm using two different video cards, and my understanding is that both monitors need to be plugged into the same video card in order for OBS to switch back and forth, which honestly, I think that's kind of ridiculous, but you know, whatever it is what it is. So I may end up having to use my phone to complete some of this video to take video of the screen, the secondary screen, the monitor with VirtualBox running. All right. Now let's pull that back up a second here. Okay, so as I said, you could see that Windows 10 is running in the background. 
And, you know, that's me clicking the start button there and all that and through the preview. That is a secondary monitor that I was mentioning. All right. Now, my understanding is that for the longest time when you were installing the extension, the extension pack onto your Windows, you had to, at least for Windows 10, because it's different from Windows 7 and, you know, other versions, because, you know, I did have Windows XP and Windows 7 installed on the virtual machine. But anyways, talking about Windows 10, you have to hold the shift key down and then click restart. All right. And the power restart, which opens up the advanced settings page so that you can do things like change startup settings and then go into safe mode. Because originally, in order to install the, ex the extension pack, you had to be in safe mode to make that happen. Apparently, that's no longer the case. Because when I tried to install that extension pack using safe mode, I got a blue screen, which was a driver's issue. So then I installed the, I, I went back into the Windows on the virtual box and I went to install that onto, the, onto that virtual box on the operating system, I mean, just regularly without being in safe mode. And while it technically worked, it also did not. And that is because what was happening is during the install, I ended up getting like a black screen, not like a BSOD or anything, just a black screen where like the drivers trying to install the graphic drivers or whatever, something fouled up or whatever the case may be. I'm not entirely sure how that was happening. But long story short, I was just getting a black screen and nothing else. Well, it turns out that what you need to do is on your operating system, you have to go into settings. Okay, and I know you really can't see that very well in the preview. I'm just trying to give you a little bit of an idea of what's happening. What I will do is use my phone on the secondary monitor to give you a better view and also ex exactly how to go about this. But what you would do is you would, at the, you would click devices optical drives and you would click on VirtualBox Guest Edition's ISO and then you'll have a little check mark next to it which means it's mounted that ISO. It also seems like you can click insert Guest Edition CD image as well at the bottom as opposed to going through the optical drives as I just mentioned. Um, I have not used that insert Guest Edition CD image um, option before and I believe it might be new. I'm not certain of that. Anyways, when you install that VirtualBox Guest Editions, you are, you are um, installing it onto the operating system, the one that's in the back. Okay, so here's where the problem lied. Is what I found out is that I actually had to go into the apps and then go down and uninstall the original Oracle VM VirtualBox Guest, VirtualBox Guest Editions from the apps and features and then go back and reinstall the guest editions because for whatever reason how it used to be is that when you installed the guest editions it would uninstall the original and reinstall the new the new one and it would just work this time it was not and the way to fix that for me was to just completely uninstall it from the add remove programs under settings all right, so we're going to stop here. I'm going to stop the video here, get out my phone, and uh, do the rest of the recording for the secondary monitor so that I can show you exactly how you would go about doing all of this. All right, so let me uh, go ahead and stop this here, and uh, we'll, we'll pick up in just a moment. Okay, so... Now I'm on my phone because as I was mentioning, when you're using OBS, if OBS is only connected, I mean, excuse me, if your monitor is only connected to one graphics card and you have two graphics cards, both monitors have to be connected to the same graphics card in order for OBS to be able to set up another capture device. Because when I've tried to set up a secondary capture device to capture that monitor, it doesn't work. Even if I take this and then drag it over there. 
Okay, it just it just doesn't work. It just only does that one. Now, as I said, that's because this monitor is connected to an AMD card, and this monitor is connected to an NVIDIA card. Now, let's go over to VirtualBox for a minute. I'm going to scroll, we're going to have to zoom in. I apologize for the quality, I'm using my hand, and it may not be as stable as I would like. So if you click Devices, you can click Insert Guest Edition CD Image, or click here, and click that, the VBox Guest Editions ISO. As you see, there's a check mark there. That's because it's already um, mounted. Now, when you mount the image, you will get a pop-up asking you what you want to do with it to install the software. And if it doesn't happen, you can just go to my computer, you know, um, this PC, where your C drive is and all those other things, and you'll be able to see, you know, the... Uh, the, the guest editions install image. You can just right click on it, which, as a matter of fact, we can just do that real quickly here. And so, right, right click on this, and you can just install it that way as well if you don't get the pop up asking you what you'd like to do. Okay, now, as I had mentioned before, when dealing with virtual machines, it used to be that when you installed the extension pack, you had to do it in safe mode, but apparently that's not the case anymore. At least today, when I tried to install the guest editions using safe mode, what I got was a black, uh, what I got was a blue screen of death, BSOD, and it was driver related. So I reset the virtual box and, you know, essentially restarted the operating system and I installed it regularly without using safe mode. Uh, now, well, the problem that I had run into is that I, dur during the install, I kept getting a black screen where you couldn't see anything. It was just a black screen. And what I had to do was I had to go down and click Settings. And I had to go into the Apps and actually uninstall this. But it was the first version. Okay? You see there it says 6.1.16. That's the newest version. I actually had to click this click uninstall and then after uninstalling it go back and install the guest editions okay it used to be that if you just installed the guest editions what you'd end up with is the op the uh software just installing and un uninstalling the old one and reinstalling the new ones with no problem. It's interesting is I ran into that situation twice except the first time it was with uh, audio drivers where for whatever reason reinstalling the audio drivers wasn't actually fixing the problem that I was running into. And I did a different video on that already. So twice now I've had to legitimately manually uninstall some software in order to install the new software or drivers you know as in the first situation and uh, so basically that's how you fix the black screen if you happen to have a virtual machine and you go to install the newest version of extensions okay so that's how you solve that problem thanks for listening thanks for watching and if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you don't give it a thumbs down and uh, Please feel free to subscribe, and I'll try to get as much content out as much as I possibly can. Thanks for watching.